Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number nine. If you've listened to the first date, you know what this is all about. So let's just get right into it. Stephen writes, I was listening to one of your shows recently with the Air Force Navigator as a guest. I will admit that I don't know much about all the science behind the Flat Earth concept, but I've been following it a fair amount lately. I might have a rabbit hole for you to follow some. EPIRBs, otherwise known as Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacons. I work on a deep water oil rig offshore and we are trained to use these. In short, it sends a GPS signal to a set of satellites that then rebroadcast your location to ground receivers and they alert the local authorities, Coast Guard, etc., of your position so that they can rescue you. Now, one company I found claims to send your location and a text message to phones when you test the system. A link to the company is here, and that link, if anyone wants it, is www.406link.com forward slash fax, F-A-Q-S dot A-S-P-X. I recalled that the navigator and you were mentioning something along the lines of GPS not working in the Southern Hemisphere and after about a couple hundred feet off the ground. Well, anyway, an EPIRB with a test system linked to the company above would possibly be a cheaper alternative to test some of your ideas. They are designed to work in the middle of the ocean, by the way. Another possibility would be to try to contact the programmers for the satellite systems the 406 link company uses. I'd love to take a telescope to my rig and film footage of things far away, but unfortunately my particular, my particular rig doesn't allow electronic items outside, although others do and the visual information could easily be compared with the radar screens. The night shift BCOs that monitor the radar are usually pretty laid back and bored and I doubt they would mind posting a camera on the radar. You could use the comparisons to measure distance. Just some ideas. Sorry for taking up your time, as I know you're very busy. I hope my ideas give you further paths of research. And if my company ever sticks me on a different rig that allows electronics outside or filming, I will let you know. Sincerely, Stephen, Louisiana, United States. P.S. I occasionally travel to, travel to Venezuela and Colombia, so if you need someone to do some kind of test down there, feel free to email me and we can discuss it. My next trip to, is to Bogota, Colombia on the 29th of this month. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to give out his email address for anyone that wants to contact this guy. If you've got a cool little test you'd like to uh, come up with. His email is cl, I'm sorry, c1.steven, s-t-e-p-h-e-n-2 at gmail.com. So thank you very much, Stephen. Nice offer. Uh, let's see here. This one's from Jay Manley, I believe. It's called Midnight Sun. Greetings, Mark. Another Canadian here. A lot of Canadians. I listened to a recent episode of your radio show today where you said that the Midnight Sun was one of the few things that you couldn't account for in the Flat Earth model. That's true. I mean, I can't, but there's others that can. It's not something I really focus on. This surprised me as the Midnight Sun was what tipped the scales for me in regarding flat versus globe. In my mind, the Midnight Sun makes far more sense in the flat model than the globe. On the Flat Earth model, the Sun is rotating above the Earth in a circular motion, as I'm sure you know. It appears to head south in our winter and north in our summer. As it heads north, it would have to make a smaller circle in the sky. When it reaches its most northerly point, it would be making a very small circle around the North Pole. Anything in the center of that circle or close to it would constantly be exposed to sunlight. Can you let me know why you think this doesn't apply? It seems like a simple and observable explanation for the midnight sun, for far more satisfying than the globe explanation. Am I missing something? Why do you not use this explanation? Thanks for all the work you do. My nine-year-old son loves your show. It really makes him think. Uh, John, otherwise known as John C. Manley. Uh, and I'm not going to give his website out, but he's out of uh, Ontario. Uh, thanks, John. And uh, yeah, I don't focus on the midnight sun uh, so much because there's a lot of other points that I think are stronger. And for me, again, and I know it, some, it drives some people nuts, 
uh, the sky it doesn't really concern me that much because if we are inside the inside a planetarium, then just about anything can be done with the ceiling. Well, let's let's face it. You know, if, it, if anyone thinks I'm kidding, you know, go to call up any planetarium and say, hey, look, what can be done when it comes to stars? Can you spell out my name in stars? Yes, they can. Can they put your name on the moon? Yes, they can. And this is just a planetarium. This isn't a lot of software here. This is just a projection screen. So uh, when it comes to the midnight sun, do I think there's something going on there? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, when it comes to Antarctica, do I know exactly what it is? No, no, I don't. But again, I focus on the broader strokes if I can. Uh, let's see, this one's called Survival Guide. Mark, keep up the good work. You and the other flat earths, flat earths, are making great progress. I appreciate all you do follow your channel religiously. I'm a businessman, family man, and a prepper, and always continue my understanding of this earth. I know it is flat, and as people become more awake, the government is more likely to create another big event to distract or disable us. P.S. I would love your survival guide. Thanks, Ryan Brown, lead agent for Corners Home Team. Uh, he's a realtor, and I don't know where he's from. Uh, oh, wait, he's in New Mexico. Wow. You, you, dude, you gave me a lot of information there. And um, yeah, if, uh, if I didn't send you the survival guide already, just anyone that wants one, I've, I've got a free one that I made up a couple of years ago called Empty Shelves. It's about 100 pages long. It's a PDF file. It's about two megs. Just all you have to do is email me with the word survival guide uh, or I want survival guide. And that's probably the easiest. And I will just shoot it off to you in an email. And hopefully you'll never have to use it. But you know what? The end of the year is coming up pretty soon. And who knows what craziness is going to follow. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Balloons. Hello, I enjoy your work. Why doesn't someone with a little money charter a plane leaving the south tip of uh, South America and verify the ice wall and treaty? If the treaty is true, you would meet up with MIGs or F-35s. Just re-Google, we'll be using balloons to expand Wi-Fi. If we have satellites, they're maybe balloon-based. Uh, yeah, there's some wonderful videos out recently about the balloon, the United States NASA balloon program, which has been going on since the 1950s. And uh, check it out when you get a chance. I mean, it's, just, it's amazing what they can do with balloons now. I saw an interview with a crew member of a C-130 type plane with a tail hook. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, there you go. I think you probably watched that. They have been recovering balloons for many years. Thanks, Tim Green. Thank you, Tim. I did watch that video, but if anyone wants to know what you can do with balloons, do I think everything up there is balloons? No, I don't. But I do think that, that balloon technology can be used as a substitute for a lot of stuff. Definitely. Uh, next email. This one's called Shalom with a question. Shalom to you in Jesus' name. I watched a few of your videos and some of the others. It seems some of you don't have, all have the same view about the earth. Yeah, that's true. One man said the sun and the moon is under the dome, and you said it's either outside the barrier or uh, the other said the theory of gravity is false. Well, gravity is, I should probably clarify that real quick. Uh, what I think is gravity, I think it's a form of molecular magnetism. Uh, that's all it is. It, now, we're, nobody, no, I don't think anyone in the, in the it, well, there's are a few people in the Flat Earth community that are saying that gravity doesn't exist at all, the, that it's completely opposite of, of what the scientists say. I don't know if I believe it's a form of buoyancy, but if it turns out to be a form of buoyancy, hey, great, wonderful. You know, again, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The best part about the flat Earth community is that it opens minds for all sorts of concepts. So, the, which is why I can't shoot anything down. You know, people people come say, "Oh, why don't you condemn this?" or "Why don't you come to this?" You know, condemn this theory. It's like, are you kidding? I I open my day. I start my morning with a bowl of flat Earth flakes. And everything after that, how can I condemn anybody about anything? So when I, I, in fact, I smile every time now when somebody calls me or emails me. It's like, I'm going to tell you something and it's going to sound a little crazy. It's like, dude, do you even know what I've been doing for the last year and a half? Crazy is my starting point. So, uh, yeah, when it, is where, the, where exactly the sun and the moon are, I don't know. Are they above the firmament? Are they below the firmament? I do not know. Uh, I, I'm not going to shoot down anybody's concept. I'm just, I just know that the, the big thing, the one thing that everybody in the community can agree on is that the world is not what they've been telling us. They've been going way, way out of bounds to tell us it's a globe. 
and they've been doing it with almost no evidence. So all can anybody can really agree on is not a, a globe. Is it perfectly flat? Don't know. Where the sun and the moon are? Don't know. How high is the firmament? Have no idea. Can, can approximate, can take some best guesses. Uh, and I think those guesses are as, uh, are as good as what NASA had in the beginning. Anyway, continuing on with this email. Now, here's my question. It doesn't really matter if the Earth is, there we go, the, the Earth is flat, round, ball shape, or pyramid. The most important thing in my life is God sent his son to die for me. Well, yeah. Um, then we have, <coughs> excuse me, the prophet John writing his visions. And he said he saw a city coming down to earth whose height and length and breadth was the same, which could be a pyramid or it could be a board cube. I put that in there, not him. I mean, seriously, if you're the height and width and the breadth, sounds like a cube to me. Question, if the earth is flat and there is an ice barrier holding the water and there is also a continent at the bottom called Antarctica, how can anyone go there without falling off the edge when some of you claim there is no such thing as gravity? Oh, Lord, this guy's killing me. Uh, the, the edge surrounds the, the edge of Antarctica starts out at 200 feet high and ramps up really, really quickly to about two miles high. So no, nothing, nobody's falling off the edge. Water's not going off the edge. Nothing's going off the edge. In fact, most people, as far as I can tell, could never make it to the edge without some advanced technology. So I, I believe in grab, I believe in gravity, but I don't, I mean, something, obviously, you know, you drop a pen, it falls to the floor. Something is either pulling it down or pushing it down, that arose by any other name. So you want to call it gravity? I, all I know is the force exists. What that force is, I'm not buying it when it comes to mainstream science. They say, oh, it's density and, and uh, the, the material and the mass is condensed and it's, it's pulling down, you know, it's, it's warping space time. And even then, you know, scientists have a hard time with that. So, no, I think there is gravity. I just don't think it's what the textbooks tell us. Uh, how did Mr. Bird get there without falling off the edge of flat earth? This guy's killing me again. If you have an answer, please let me know. If not, no problem. <laughs> Sign the watchman. Uh, thanks, watchman. Hopefully you got enough other responses I already gave you. Uh, this one, this email is titled Disco Sky. Ooh, I like it already. Hi, Mark. This is Chris, United States Navy, stationed in Japan. I follow the flat earth. But I never heard anybody talk about the obvious thing in the sky. If the Earth is spinning constantly and super fast, plus all the ball Earth models shown in school and science, wouldn't the sky be like a disco flashing light of the sun? Hmm. Like a movie projector or someone switching the on and off button really fast? Uh, you would notice that very well. So the time and speed of the Earth for a day and around the sun does not make sense. The models always show slow or fast, but fast spin does not justify the sunlight we see every day. Thank you for your time and keep up the great work. Um, I don't know exactly what he's going for there. If somebody wants to address that and email me, uh, maybe help, somebody else can respond to that better than, better than I can. Uh, all I can tell you is the sky, there's one of two things happening when it comes to the sky. When you look up and you look at any time lapse of the, of the stars, or you don't even have to look at a time lapse, but a time lapse helps. It gives people a better perspective. One of two things is happening. Either the sky is moving, meaning the stars, or the earth is moving. Has to be one of those two things. It's an either or. Uh, I believe that the sky is moving because, I, again, I think we're inside a giant planetarium and a, a dome-like structure with the stars hanging up there and they're moving around because we're not feeling any motion down here. It's got to be one or the other. And it's, again, since human beings are notoriously bad at perceiving relative motion, not motion, but relative motion, uh, then, I, again, stars, stars are moving, plain and simple. Uh, this email is titled Flat Earth, very original. Hi, Mark. I know you probably receive many emails from people that have watched or heard your commentaries on the Flat Earth Theory. I am calling it a theory because even though I believe that the powers of the world are hiding something, we are kept in such darkness that anything we say is laughed at by other people, therefore it is impossible to get the truth. I live in the outskirts of Chicago and am a huge conspiracy theorist. And I just screwed up my scrolling. Sorry, I was going for something, something quick here. And I, now I gotta go all the way back down. Sorry guys. Uh, who was that? Oh man, it's the last time I'm gonna click on that. Slow or fast. 
Okay. Uh, I'm calling it theory of religion. Um, we are kept in darkness and anything we say is laughed at by other people. Therefore, it is impossible to get the truth. I live in the outskirts of Chicago and am a huge conspiracy theorist. I had to scale back because it was affecting my health and mental state. I live every day wondering what I'm missing. Looked up at the sky, waiting for something to happen. I was in New Jersey when the second plane hit the World Trade Center. I saw the goof-ups during the Sandy Hook broadcast before anyone mentioned it. I often think about everything else that doesn't make sense or that's so far beyond comprehension that you have to wonder if the world, the United States, is run by mentally handicapped individuals. Hmm. I have two little girls who are I am deathly afraid of losing to some catastrophic event that we could have prepared for but didn't due to lack of information. Is the, If there is nothing going on, then why the seed vault? Why move to the Denver area? Why all the preparation if nothing is going to happen? I do believe that everyone should always be prepared for the unexpected, but the United States has been preparing for something I believe they know will happen. This email could go on and on, but I'll cut to the chase. What can people do to get the truth without getting on some government watch list or worse, disappearing? We will die not knowing the truth, and will our children, their children, and so on go on living in the dark and being controlled by a few that have control? Does the feeling of knowing that what you think you know or see around you is not real? Uh, I don't know if I should answer any of these individually. Um, <clears throat> I do, yeah, of course. The do, do I think you can get truth without being put on some watch list? Uh, probably not. At this point, the the data streams are being monitored so heavily that anybody that's that's viewing any combination of certain videos uh, is probably being put on some sort of list. But that list, you know, has different levels of priorities. And do I think you're on it? Yeah, probably not. There's a bigger picture at work here. Do do I think there's something big coming down the pipe? Yes, I do. Do I think there's a chance for redemption? Yes, I do. Do I think there'll be some crossroads where humanity can either go into darkness or rise above it all into a new golden age? Yes, I do. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at the world, ha uh, you know, with a glass half full type of perspective. And that's all I can really tell you. So, you know, have hope. Hope springs eternal. That's all I can tell you for that right now. I go to day to day watching the news, looking for clues. And my only conclusion is that we're heading for something really bad. Well, yeah, it does look like that sometimes. Anarchy, murders, and the collapse of civilization as we know it, followed by who knows what. What do you do, if anything, to live every day without worrying? Or maybe you're just like me, a worrier too. Thank you for the information you provide to the public. Thanks. What is his name? Frank. Okay, Frank. Um, no, I don't worry that much because I believe that this world is, I, I give, I look at it kind of like Bill Hicks looked at it. It's part amusement park ride, part planetarium, part terrarium, part wildlife preserve, part lab experiment, and part school. It's all these things combined. And I think it's here for a reason. I think it's put here to give us perspective, to get, it is, it is for us to learn from. And so uh, to steal the line from the Matrix, everything has a beginning, has an end. Did, you know, even in the Matrix, there was victory in defeat. Do I think that the powers that be are going to try to turn it to a dark, down a dark path? Yes, of course they do. Because that's, I think, their role is that's what they were designed to do. Kind of like the key maker. We're all here to do what we're all here to do. And I think the, the overbearing overlords... That's that's their job is they're going to try to turn this into something dark. We, the, the people, have a chance to brace against it and turn it into something wonderful. Uh, so should you be concerned? Yes. Should you be vigilant? Yes. Should you worry about your daughters? Sure. Of course. I mean, it's easy for me to say I'm not worried because I don't I necessarily have a family. So I put myself out there more than other people. But to date, no suits and sunglasses have shown up at my door yet or given me any phone calls or even an email. So it lets me know that, that this path, for whatever reason, is the right path to take and that the powers that be know it and maybe they can't stop it. Maybe it's inevitable for them too. So I don't want to dwell on it too much, but I think you, you know where I'm going with this, Frank. Uh, this one's called, email's called Flat Earth Clues. Another original one. Hi, Mark. I stumbled across your videos on YouTube and the information presented truly resonated with me. I was raised a Catholic, but dispelled the notion of a God at a very young age. 
After watching your videos, I have a couple of points to make. One, I am over 40 and from the UK. After watching your videos, I was reminded of a memory when I was in primary school, essentially the equivalent of kindergarten in the USA. I can clearly remember an incident, an incident upon where the whole class was subject to a map of the Earth, the standard world map model. He's talking about the Mercator map. In a paper 2D representation, the whole class was asked to plot the shortest route, route from South America to Australia. Obviously, 99.9% .9 of our class plotted a route across the Atlantic and Indian Ocean from South America to Australia. Our teacher stated we were all wrong. Upon this, one student adopted the globe Earth model and plotted west from South America to Australia, upon which he was praised by the teacher and everyone else was felt to feel dumb. This memory is so vivid now, I have been researching the Flat Earth Theory. It almost appears as if this was serious indoctrination as I was merely six or seven years old and did not have the acumen or intelligence to even question this notion. Two, the current globe with a heliocentric model states that the sun is 93 million miles away and that all the rays from the sun hit the earth parallel. Yet, how does this explain the temperature differential from the equator to the tropics? We were supposed to believe the sun's rays hit the earth from 93 million miles away at the equator, causing 40 degrees Celsius temperatures, yet a mere 600 miles north or south, the sun's rays produce a mere 30 degrees Celsius temperatures, also known as summer. If the rays are hitting parallel, then how is there such a huge difference? It's an excellent question. The only explanation is the geocentric model, in my humble opinion. The truth will be revealed before acceptance always comes denial. Kudos to you, Mr. Sargent, for finally exposing the lie which all other conspiracies have been obfuscating. Well, I don't use that word much. For the last 500 years, alien, space, Illuminati, Anunnaki, Nibiru, mind control, remote viewing. I am not sure there is a god or even a creator, but it is irrefutable that the Earth is a flat plane in the center of the universe. Thanks, man. It's awesome. Uh, let's see. This one's called Major Inconsistency on YouTube Flat Earth Video Counts. Urgent. And this one was sent on the 5th, so uh, you'll understand here in a second. Guys, I noticed this. See attached screenshots. Searching for any term in YouTube presumably returns an approximate count on how many videos and playlists exist in total to contain the term. Mark, I noted that you also follow this and compare it with other popular searches like Obama or whatever. I seem to remember that for the term flat earth, this count was more than 6 million some weeks ago. So I got puzzled when it decreased dramatically and started investigating. Notice the two screenshots I am attaching. They are about 40 hours apart. I, I know what he's talking about here. And the count on the first one is 5,050,000, whereas the count on the second one, only 40 hours later, is at 5,700,000. I also used a proxy for the second screenshot and entered from a different country to establish whether this is the source of this huge inconsistency. And it turns out that it is not. You are welcome to investigate it yourself. Uh, so either I got lucky and witnessed a moment in space and time that more than half a million flat earth videos got posted in under 48 hours, or someone is putting a deliberate and conscious effort to prune results and hide facts. By the way, I noticed the same pattern on the petition to the White House for NASA to answer 12 questions about the shape of the Earth. Unfortunately, I did not engage in vigorous screen capturing, but I witnessed the counter of signatures to actually decrease from one moment to the next, evidence of manipulation. Therefore, the next petition, if, if any, should be done with actual physical collection of signatures and not electronically. I'm a physicist specializing in astrophysics by profession, yes, really, and I have done this for 16 years. I follow your shows and your YouTube posts very carefully. And for me, you have attained a level of clear headedness and openness that has yet to be matched in the academia, at least the part of the academia that I have been interacting with throughout my professional life. Faithfully, Aris. And yeah, Aris, you're, you're very, very right. Uh, I saw that myself when the, the count had dropped. Most people, when, if they know that they're following my stats videos, these little short two or three minute videos, where I, where I compare the stats of Flat Earth to other uh, mainstream topics out there. The, it had gotten it up to around 7.4, 7.5 million and then started dropping fairly steadily for no apparent reason. People were still cranking out videos, new channels were coming out. And it started dropping to, it got all the way down to like 4.9. 
uh, and which was really, really interesting. And it, it took about six weeks, seven weeks to do that. And then in less than a week, it climbed all the way back up to seven for no apparent reason. And not only that, but the, the bigger count, if you want to have some fun, type in Earth is flat or the Earth is flat or whatever, but three words is fine. Earth is flat. And it was at about 10 million. And then it jumped all the way to 12 million. And in fact, uh, just a couple days ago, it was at 13 million. And now it's back down to 12 and a half million. Uh, you know, is, are the YouTube algorithms, are they messing with it? Yeah, they are. I don't know exactly to, to, for what purpose, uh, because I, I have a, uh, my liked list. If you go into my channel, Mark K. Sargent, and you clicked on my liked videos, I've got like 3,000 plus videos in there. And I go through those on a regular basis to see how many people have changed them to private or got embarrassed and got deleted. And very, very few. I, th I think we only lose like maybe a percentage point a week out of that, out of that list, maybe. And, it, it, you know, while the entire time I was dropping, I was checking that list. Nothing was happening to that. And when it was increasing rapidly, I don't know. It was almost like the powers that be were sending uh, us a message saying, look, you know, you guys are generating a lot of the stuff. True. But we manipulate, you know, we still have control of the overall numbers. So it's interesting. Yeah, I'll keep putting on the stat videos every every once in a while. I'm going to wait for this. You know, I waited a month between the last ones. I don't know if I'll wait a month on the next one because I want to get one out before the election. But anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, this email is called Wizard of Oz Flat Earth Reference. Hi, Mark. Because of the research I have done over the years on MK Ultra, I have always been suspicious of the Wizard of Oz and know that it is a political commentary. But beyond that, while reading this book to my class today, I could not help but wonder if this was a Flat Earth reference. I am anxious to get back to my aunt. Oh, this is a quote from the movie. I'm anxious to get back to my aunt and uncle, for I am sure they will worry about me. Can you help me find my way? The munchkins and the witch first looked at one another, and then at Dorothy, and then shook their heads. At the east, not far from here, said one, there is a great desert, and none could live to cross it. It is the same at the south, said another, for I have been there and seen it. The south is a country of the quadlings. I am told, says a third man, that it is the same in the west, and that country where the Winkies live is ruled by the Wicked Witch of the West, who would make you her slave if you passed her way. The north is my home, said the old lady, and it's at its edge is the same great desert that surrounds this land of Oz. I'm afraid, my dear, you will have to live with us. Though it could be coincidence, I could not help but think of how this is precisely why we do not explore too far from our continents. With the, you cannot survive, travel to the poles or to space, so you are stuck here. Thank you, all caps, for all that you do to give us flat earthers a sane voice. By the way, this is one educator that DOE does not continue to push the illusion on the next generation. Her name is Marlene Dean. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, very inspiring. Uh, Andrew Lanks writes, uh, this email is called NASA parody short film Flat Earth. Thank you, Mark. Uh, what is the latest on Flat Earth from your perspective? Is the awareness exploding as it appears to be? Thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just mentioned the, the, the previous email. The count on Earth is flat has jumped from 10 million to over 12 million in a span of less than two weeks. And I am just waiting for some weird mainstream story to break on it. I mean, there's lots more people, you know, new new YouTube channels all the time. And the great thing about the Flat Earth community, which which makes it so any of anyone's out there, producers that are listening, here's what makes it different. You any from any other conspiracy, if you get excited about 9-11 or Sandy Hook or Boston bombing or World Trade Center or JFK or take your pick. Yeah, you might get you might get motivated to comment on a video. You may even get motivated to make your own video, maybe. But when it comes to flat Earth, people don't make just one flat Earth video. I mean, they create brand new flat YouTube channels, and they'll say like, "This is the first time I've ever been on YouTube, and I'm going to talk about flat Earth." And they make like five, six YouTube, you know, flat Earth videos, and they get burned out, and then but they leave their channels up. And that's what this thing does. It, that's how much enthusiasm this thing generates. It's so polarizing. And the same thing, it also works on the other side, whereas you get, you know, debunkers that won't, the, the hardcore debunkers won't let this thing go. You know, they, they just keep trying to hammer on it because they can't believe 
the the, the Pandora's box is still out there. Yeah, the, the, I've seen some guys recently who've come back, debunkers have come back into this because like what, six, eight, nine, you know, nine months, 12 months later, this flatter thing's still growing. I, well, I, I thought I debunked it last year. Well, apparently you didn't. Uh, and you're not going to, and, and that's because the numbers are just way, way too big. You know, you have any doubts if you're a debunker, type in your name into YouTube, see how, what your hit results come out in as, and then type in Earth is flat and see what happens there. It, it is a huge groundswell slash tide slash movement slash awakening, and it's not going to be stopped. It's not. It's it's. It's it's a Pandora's box, and from the the other thing that really lets me sleep soundly at night with this is that the retention rate, the the uh, attrition rate on flat Earth is almost non-existent. Meaning, even with something like Christian Science, you'll get like a what 10, 15 percent dropout rate. Even with a major religion, you're going to get people that fall away from whatever church it is. But when it comes to flat Earth. Nobody comes out. I mean, to date, there's what two people now total. I think one. Yeah, there was one guy other than Tiger Dan. Tiger Dan didn't even make it all the way out of the rabbit hole. Once you see one, if you can get to the point where you say, "I absolutely believe, believe in flat Earth," there's a 99.9 percent chance you're staying with that and you're not coming back out of it. That you know you can't go back to the globe, and that's why flat Earth is sticking because. Even if you're quiet about it, even if you're in the closet about it, even if you don't tell your friends and family and you don't spread the word, it's still in your head. And you're going to let it slip to somebody because you can't help it. The enthusiasm is just it's too strong. Anyway, that's my thing for Andrew. Uh, this one, let's see here. Uh, who's this from? Another guy. Hi, Mark. I discovered Flat Earth about two weeks ago. Thank you for all your great research and I've enjoyed your, your interviews and Rob Skiba. Wanted to send you my NASA parody. Oh, it's from the same guy. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, his video was called NASA Artist Exposes Globe Hoax NASA Parody Flat Earth. So check that out when you get a chance. I watched it. It was pretty good. Uh, this one's called Greetings from Guatemala. Hi, my name is Alvaro. Congratulations. You have been heard down here to Guatemala. Feel free to write me. Ciao. Our Alvaro Arturo Caravantes. Thanks, man. It's awesome. Guatemala. This one's called Good Morning, Mark. Thanks you so much, Mark. My first show was a success because of you. You added so much insight and personality, too. It was a joy working with you. Maybe in six months, if there is some breaking news, you will come and visit us again. You are awesome, Mark Sargent, my flat earth daddy, J.E. Who the heck sent this? Flat Earth Freedom. Oh, Flat Earth Freedom with J.E. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I know. I'm sorry. This is this is my, the uh, that Flat Earth um, uh, Christian Woman's Show uh, I did the other day. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Flat Earth Daddy. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm blushing over here. Uh, let's see. This one is... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm scrolling through. This one is called Survival Guide. Survival Guide, please, and thank you again for reading my email, the guy with the extensive testimony. I did have a beard then, but I've since trimmed it significantly and recorded the act, which can be found on the same channel as the testimony. All the best, and God bless. Derek. Thanks, Derek. Chuck writes, F.E. Cosmology questions. Cosmology? Cosmogony? Cos cosmogony questions. Is that a word? Hello, Mark. My name is Chuck Coclesure. I am a professor of religion, mythology, philosophy, and ethics at the University of Phoenix, San Diego campus. I have been studying flat earth ideas for several months with some fascination. I especially have enjoyed your flat earth clues series on YouTube. Interestingly, before I ever imagined taking a serious look at flat earth, I was including in my mythology courses several of the cosmological structures of numerous ancient civilizations and was struck by their commonalities, especially the ideas of the flatness of the land masses and over our arching sky domes. Anyway, the main purpose for this email is to ask this question. In your view, who are the creators, gods, behind the design and construction of the flat e edifices? Uh, boy, you want me to define who God is? I, I can't say. I, you know, it's, it's, but it's going to be one of two things. You know, if this place was built or was created, that means there is a creator. So it's either 
an ultimate one-off divine creator or God subcontract subcontracted off the work. So it could be an advanced civilization, and this is just one layer closer to discovering who God is. It's one of those two. And do I do I have the arrogance to name God? No, no, not not by any any stretch. I uh, see. Several times your videos allude to such a being or beings without elaboration. Do you consider this to be God or the gods in some traditional sense? Yes, I do. Or are you postulating a superior but created alien race keeping us in the flat earth zoo they have constructed uh, as with the Truman Show? Yes, both. Um, I, I could go either way on that. Uh, put, a, put another way, is flat earth part of some original genesis, uh, one geocentric cosmogony? Or is it a later construct put together by super yet unknown beings who are themselves creatures in some larger scheme? Yes, that's the only answer I can give you. It's got to be one of those two. Uh, but I, I wouldn't bet money on either one of them, to, to be honest. Uh, I realize we are in the realm of speculation, yes we are, regarding such questions. But since you have been thinking about this idea much longer than I, I'd like to know what you have come up with. I am hoping to include, <clears throat> excuse me, cause FE cosmogenic diagrams in the future of mythology and maybe even religion courses. Can you recommend a convenient source for such images? Oof. Uh, any further thoughts you might pass along to me would be appreciated. Thanks, Chuck Cochlezer. And yeah, when it comes to images, honestly, I get it. I get it's not a big secret. You just there's so many images on the internet. I just go into whatever search engine and then you know type in whatever I'm looking for, type in images, and just start scrolling through the pages, and grab what I can. And so far, it's worked really, really well. I've never gotten a copyright thing on them. Spencer writes, a few questions. Dear Mark, I recently came across your work and a few questions immediately came to mind. More recently, I have gotten into sidereal astrology, which is a mix of both astrology and astronomy. For as most people don't know, the 12 signs of astrology uh, are not the 13 constellations that occupy the ecliptic. Hmm. So when I first heard your theories, I wondered about the existence of the Southern Pole Star. Though admittedly, I have not looked into this subject and none of the videos on YouTube have addressed this question. Why is it that anyone in the Southern Hemisphere can look south with an open exposure camera and see that all of the stars rotate around a single point in the sky and anyone in the Northern Hemisphere can look north and see a similar phenomena with different constellations? Both rotating in opposite directions, if the Earth were flat with a single dome overhead, it would stand to reason that we would only have one polar star. My thanks for taking the time to answer these questions, Spencer. An older question, Spencer, but I'm going to answer it again anyway. <clears throat> when it comes to the sky, if we are in a planetarium, and it is a really, really big planetarium, I'm talking thousands of miles wide, many thousands of miles wide. Well, not many, but a lot. Um, then when it comes to what's projected in the sky, you can have multiple projection systems and you can have the entire projection system instanced. And you don't need to call it a hologram or anything like that. It can be physical. Meaning you can have separate, separate projection systems based on geography. Uh, meaning if, if you're in the south, you see certain things in the sky. When you're in the north, you're seeing a certain things in the sky. But both, since you can't be in two places at once, you're going to fall for the illusion. So both sides are going to think that they're seeing the exact same belt of Orion. But in truth, you're seeing completely different belts of Orion. Again, you can only be in one place at one time, so the illusion works very, 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 very well. Um, somebody asked me recently, you know, is, is, you're saying that God is lazy and, and that built this, you know, without, without too much thought and care. I'm going, no, the exact opposite. And that is, it's very, very efficient. If the illusion works, that's what you go with. If 99.99% of the population believe in the illusion of space in the solar system, then you use the illusion. And then you can deal with the, the, the fraction of a percentage because that's actually kind of interesting to see how they fiddle with it anyway. So that's my answer to that. Uh, so I'm if we can crank the rest of these out before I finish this thing because I really want to get rid of these. These are all the emails I was supposed to get through through the last Strange World show. But unfortunately, uh, the phone calls would not stop coming in. Well, I mean, it's good. I love talking to people, but it means I can't get through the emails, so i got to do these. This one's called The Sun Over a Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. The other day while walking my dogs, the early morning sun was shining through the clouds, spreading the rays in all directions, as I am sure we have all seen at some time. I started thinking about the double slit experiment and thought it could be something similar, causing the rays to spread out. After checking out a video where sunlight was used in the double slit experiment, not atoms, it became evident that the effect on the light rays would be to spread them out 
but they would be split into the colors of the rainbow due to the different wave frequencies of the light colors that make up the rainbow or spectrum. I have to say, I am not a believer that the sun is only a few thousand miles away, but I remembered someone saying that the light is invisible in space until it hits something, perhaps the dome. So what if when the light hits the dome, the dome becomes the source of the light perhaps only a hundred miles up or so, uh, and that could account for the spreading of the rays as the perceived light source is much closer. What do you think? Regards, Neil. Neil, <clears throat> that's not a bad idea. And again, because I opened with Flat Earth, I'm not going to shoot it down. But I did that particular but for Eric Dubay. But you're hanging on. You got to remember the only reason you're hanging on to a solar system sun is because you're conditioned to do so. Everyone that, that's into space, they keep letting go of it in layers. It's like, oh yeah, fine. You know, I'll let go of the outer solar system, but I'm not letting go of the inner one. Jupiter's real. Fine, Jupiter's not real, but the moon is real. Fine, the moon isn't real, but the ISS is real. They just keep pulling back and pulling back. Why are you hanging on to the sun? What, why do you think it's a uh, fiery ball hundreds of thousands of miles wide and millions of miles away? Why do you think this? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Why do you think this? You can't prove it for yourself. You don't know anyone that's proved it. You're putting all your faith in the United States government. In fact, you're putting all your faith in the United States military. Because, oh, NASA isn't part of the military. Oh, yeah, it is. It's DOD all the way. In fact, it's uniquely military. The entire system is based on missile military technology. Fine, they wear white suits. They don't carry guns. They smile for, smile for the camera. That does not mean they're not military. Sean writes, moments like these make it all worth it. I know both of these people in real life. The kid who commented is the one who said all that NASA is live now, dude. And the whole argument you already read unused. Well, I messaged him last night explaining how I am not crazy and finally told him the model. The pick is the result. He may not like it, but at least he gets it. Seed sprouted and watered. Thanks, Sean. And I'm, I don't have the picture link in front of me. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see here. That's Lee. That's a ship captain guy. I already read that from last show. How many others do I got here? Mike writes, Flat Earth confirmation agreed. Hi, Mark. Help uh, for your listeners. I have been a Flat Earther now for about six weeks. I was recently in Sicily. And while there, I had the opportunity to put the Google Earth curvature of the Earth calculator to the test. Off the north coast, 35 miles away, 34 miles away, is a small island named Ustica. It has an elevation of 161 feet, which can be checked on Wiki. Anyway, using the calculation at eye height from the beach, Punta Rezai, near Terracini, looking towards the island, if the Earth was curved, the whole the island would be at a drop of 518 feet behind the curvature of the Earth. Well, what do you know? Even with the naked eye, you can see almost the whole island, which is only 161 feet high. I hope this helps your listeners to believe uh, what we are all saying is, yes, indeed, the Earth is flat. Just use your eyes and the curvature calculator on Google, but just look at the Earth clues, too. It's very easy. Keep up the good work. Signed, Anonymous. Uh, sh please keep my name off the show. Good luck, and we all have have your back, Mark. Thanks, man. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Eye Opening. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your dedication to this topic. I have been a flat earther for about 13 months. It started with a long-distance friend of mine introducing me to the concept of geocentricity and the stableness and fixed nature of the Earth. Being a strong Christian, I did not have a great deal of resistance to this concept. The topic took a major twist when the same friend said, wouldn't it be bizarre if the Earth was not only moving, but it was a flat disk? At this point, my mind could not entertain such a thought, so I avoided the topic with him for months. I accidentally stumbled upon an Eric Dubay flat Earth video and quickly became intrigued and convinced that we have been lied to about the shape of the Earth. I knew it was about to go deep inside the rabbit hole. Nice. Uh, I was wondering if you have any contacts or know of any flat earthers in the southeastern Pennsylvania area. Are there any flat earth mixers about around where I live? Uh, Southern Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Bill Ramsey. Uh, I don't bill, but I'm going to give your email out. And if anyone else is out in Pennsylvania and wants to get a hold of Bill, uh, you know, I always encourage flat earthers to meet each other and, and talk, and, you know, meet up. Uh, his email is wramsey6, so that's w-r-a-m-s-a-y-6 at comcast.net. And we have a few.
few more. Wow, Battle.net. Oh, great. Uh, this is for me. Uh, hi, pal. My name is Julian Johnson Jr. I just heard your latest YouTube video. You mentioned you play Warcraft, and so do I. Would it be possible to get your Battle.net address? Thanks for your time, buddy. Keep up the vids. Really opened my mind up, uh, so thank you. And um, I'm on Stone Mall server right now. I, it's a level 110 protection paladin. And my character name is, big surprise, Mark Sargent. M-A-R-K-S-A-R-G-E-N-T, all one word. So you can look me up. Uh, just, you know, show up on the Stone Mall server. I used to be on Dune Mall, and then I transferred. And uh, that's where I've been now. And I don't play that much uh, because of the whole Flat Earth thing has been, has been consuming my, most of my life. But, uh, but I do play it from time to time. <clears throat> and plus that new expansion is, is kind of fun. Um, this one's called Viewing a Hurricane on a Flat Model. Uh, MS, you may use my name if you read this on the air. Well, you haven't sent me your, told me your name yet. I was watching some hurricane coverage today and it occurred to me all the tra tracking graphics shown on the ABC affiliates use a Globe Earth model or Mercator map to show the hurricane movements. What would it look like on the good old geocentric azimuthal equidistant map? I don't have the graphics know how to do it, uh, but maybe one of your other fine listeners does. Also, what's your WoW server and guild name? <laughs> I might create a tune there just to hang a bit. I promise not to pester you too much. Darren in Wisconsin. Uh, thanks, Darren. And hopefully you listen to the uh, server stuff I mentioned before. Uh, Rick writes, I think I'll end on this one. Uh, 148717396. What is that number? It appears on your NASA picture. Um, what is this number? And and uh, he says, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy a lift ticket. His name is Rick Mayer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was my fault uh, because when I transferred, uh, I grabbed all my all my templates and put them on a flash drive and took them, took them up here to Victoria, Canada. And when I did that, and, and I'm using Windows Live Movie Maker, and what I didn't realize is there's a setting in Windows Live Movie Maker, I know this is kind of a geeky thing, that says uh, there's a setting built in, it's in the options, I think, or preferences, which you can remove all the captions. So a lot of pictures have default captions uh, built in. And if you if you don't remove them, they show up on the picture. So for whatever reason, that NASA picture that was on some videos when I built the stuff up here had one four eight seven one seven three nine six, and I didn't I didn't catch it. And so it was showing up. And I actually was watching this on uh, on uh, Apple TV, and you know it's just, I can check my videos up here through that. And I saw it as well. It's like going, holy crap, where's that? And then I realized it's like, oh, the captions weren't turned off. So sorry, it was a technical thing on my side. Uh, I promise I will get rid of them in the future. But yeah, if anyone sees those on some videos, you don't have to worry. It's not some weird, super secret code. Although I did not put that number on that NASA picture. That number was just attached. They put it on there themselves. And it was an original NASA image. So if anyone can decipher that, who knows? Anyway, that's all. Should I do one more? Should I, uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Let me do. Let me do one more. And I'll grab this from my other, I was going to use this for my show on Tuesday, but let's do this. Uh, that was the, nope, nope, not using that one. Should I do one more? Yeah, let's do this one. Hi, Mark. We'll end from an in with an international one. Hi, Mark. Greetings from Serbia. Uh, his name is D-J-O-R-D-J-E. I know it's difficult for you to pronounce my name. Feel free to call me Dick. I'm going to, Dick. I listen to your show on YouTube. The globe is a perfect illusion. At one point, you had a call from a guy named Eric. He mentioned the problem to the angles at which apparently the sun shines on the moon. You said you have not noticed this phenomena, but I did many, many, many times. I was wondering when someone would mention that, and I am glad that finally someone did. And not only that, I saw with my own eyes this situation. I was driving down the highway from north to south. The sun went down shortly before that, right from the direction of my movement. On the west side, of course. On the left side of the highway, quite high in the sky, there was a half moon. But what amazed me is that the crescent was reversed. I want to say that the bright side of the moon was on the left. I was shocked and cannot understand how it is possible that I did not notice it before. 
I've always wondered why many people believe that the Earth's shadow is responsible for the phases of the moon. But since that night, I no longer believe that the moonlight is a reflection of sunlight. Since then, I carefully watch the sky every night and wait for the situation with the shadow on the moon on the side where the sun is. As soon as it happens again, I'll make a video with the camera. I'll announce it on YouTube and I'll send you the link. I'm mad at myself. It took me 40, 40 years to realize that they make a fool of me. Uh, Sim Dikova Chevik. And thanks, man. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up on that one. I'm doing these uh, email shows just so you guys know because I get a whole bunch of emails uh, on a regular basis. And I, I, don't, I do not mind that at all. I love the questions. And I love the fact that, that people are, are being interactive. So if anyone wants to email me, and feel free at m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net i look through every email and uh, if i can't get it on the strange world show you'll see it on this uh, separate youtube thing but uh, just keep sending the emails and i'll keep reading them and one day we're going to uh, reach the pinnacle of this thing so thanks very much guys see you next time baby what is this what is this is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> nice.